At the start of the 2004 NFL Draft, the San Diego Chargers selected Eli Manning with the first overall pick. However, Eli Manning had already made it abundantly clear that he did not want to play for the Chargers. So when the Giants drafted Phillip Rivers with the fourth pick, they agreed to trade for Eli Manning, sending Rivers to San Diego. Phillip Rivers was not entering a starting role. He would be the third string quarterback behind the starter Drew Brees and backup Doug Flutie. Rivers would receive little to no playing time during his rookie season, but the following year, the Chargers would release Doug Flutie, which made Rivers the new backup to Breeze. But during the 2005 season, Rivers would still not get any playing time until the very last game of the season. Breeze ended up dislocating his shoulder against the Broncos, which brought Phillip Rivers onto the field. Rivers would throw for 115 yards, one interception, and two fumbles. It was obviously not a very good showing, but a showing nonetheless. Drew Brees decided to hit free agency where he would ultimately sign with the Saints. Phillip Rivers was set to become the new starter in San Diego. The 2006 Chargers were coached by Marty Schottenheimer, who had a very specific way that he wanted his quarterback to play. The Chargers started the season with a couple key things in mind. They were going to play Marty Ball, regardless of Breeze leaving and River starting, and LaDainian Tomlinson was a stud. They would start the season by annihilating the Raiders and Titans by a combined score of 67-7. to They would then lose to the Ravens, beat the Steelers and 49ers before losing to their division rivals, the Kansas City Chiefs. That would be the last loss the team would take for the remainder of the season. The Chargers would win the last 10 games of the regular season, including a 49-41 comeback against the Bengals in which Rivers threw for 338 yards, three touchdowns, and no turnovers. Throughout that 10-win stretch, it was becoming quite clear that Tomlinson was the driving force of the San Diego offense. He would finish the season with 1,815 rushing yards, and 31 touchdowns. He was so good that it earned him the MVP award. This high-powered offense, unfortunately, would be shut down in the playoffs very quickly. They would match up against New England in the divisional round and lose 14-3, bringing a very disappointing end to the Chargers' historic season. It would also bring an abrupt end not just to Schottenheimer's time in San Diego, but their offensive and defensive coordinators getting the ax too. Bizarre, is an understatement. North Turner would take the head coaching spot and struggle early in the 2007 season, leading the team to a 1-3 start. He would get things turned around by winning 10 of the next 12 games, finishing the season with an 11-5 record and winning the division. Phillip Rivers would finish the season with 3,152 yards, 21 touchdowns, and 15 interceptions. The Chargers would start the playoffs by beating the Titans in the wildcard round 17-6, they would then go to Indianapolis to play the Colts in the divisional round. The game would go back and forth, but in the second half, Rivers would tear his ACL and Tomlinson would sprain his MCL. Backup quarterback Bill Volek would finish the game and help the Chargers pass the Colts with a final score of 28-24. to The Chargers would match up against the Patriots in the AFC Championship game. This was the same team that knocked the Chargers out of the playoffs the previous year, so you would think they would be better prepared for this year's matchup. The only problem was, this was not the same New England team. This New England team had not lost a single game all season, and that was not about to change. Phillip Rivers would play on his torn ACL, LT would try and play through his MCL sprain, and Antonio Gates had a toe injury. The Chargers defense would trick Tom Brady into throwing three interceptions, with the third resulting in a fumble on the same play basically just giving New England even better field position. The Patriots were able to hold the Chargers to field goals on key possessions and ended up beating the Chargers 21 to 12, sending the Chargers back to San Diego and themselves to the Super Bowl. If Rivers and Tomlinson were healthy, there's a high chance that the Patriots' perfect season would have came to an end in a different way. 2008 would once again feature the Chargers getting off to a bad start. They'd open the season with a record of four and eight, but the Chargers had two big things working in their favor. The AFC West was really bad that year, and Phillip Rivers had one of the best years of his entire career. He would throw for a career-high 34 touchdowns on the season, 
it would set the new record for the most touchdowns thrown in a single season by any Chargers quarterback. The AFC West was so bad that the Chargers final record of eight and eight was still just enough to win the division by routing the Broncos in the last game of the regular season, opening the door for them to host a playoff game in San Diego. They would once again match up against the Colts in the playoffs and Phillip Rivers was once again able to get the best of his now rival Peyton Manning. The Chargers would go to Pittsburgh for the divisional round and lose 35 to 24. At this point, the Chargers clearly found their long-term answer at the quarterback position. Rivers was breaking franchise records, leading the team to divisional titles, and even had his name brought up multiple times in the MVP discussion. So the Chargers decided to give him a six-year, $98 million contract extension. Phillip Rivers would follow his extension with another fantastic season throwing for 4,254 yards, 28 touchdowns, and nine interceptions. He would lead the team to a 13-3 record and another trip to the playoffs. The Chargers would get to the divisional round where they would unfortunately run into a buzzsaw known as the Mark Sanchez-led New York Jets, bringing another very unfortunate end to their season. 2010 would be a fantastic year for Phillip Rivers. He threw for 30 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, and 4,710 yards. In week three against Seattle, he would throw for 455 yards, which resulted in just 20 points and a loss. That week really summed up the entire 2010 season. It was a phenomenal year for Rivers, but the Chargers, riddled with injuries, would miss the playoffs. The 2011 season would not be a great one for Rivers and the Chargers. Phillip Rivers would try and pick up where he left off the previous year and press the ball a bit too much. He turned the ball over a lot in 2011. He threw 27 touchdowns and 20 interceptions. Needless to say, the Chargers missed the playoffs again. 2012 would feature Rivers cutting back on the turnovers and having a much more efficient season. But the Chargers would finish with a record of 7-9 the first losing season of Phillip Rivers' career. It would be the third consecutive season that the Chargers missed the playoffs and resulted in a lot of the coaching staff being fired, including North Turner. At this point, because of Phillip Rivers' high turnover rate, a lot of people thought that he was hiding an injury. In these past few years, his turnovers increased and the team was consistently missing the playoffs. So when Mike McCoy took over as the new head coach, he decided to implement a new offensive system that focused on getting the ball out of Rivers' hands as quick as possible, and hopefully that would get the quarterback back on track. The new system was a success. Phillip Rivers threw 32 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and had a completion percentage of 69.5%, the highest of his entire career. On top of all of that, the Chargers would get back into the playoffs. They would beat the Bengals in the wildcard round, but lose to the Broncos in the divisional round. But it was okay, because now the Chargers were back on track with their new head coach. Right? 2014 was a very San Diego Charger kind of year. They would finish with a record of 9-7 and seven and not make the playoffs because of a Week 17 loss to the Chiefs where their offense could only produce 7 points. On paper, Phillip Rivers had a great season, but towards the end of the year, there were once again rumors that Rivers had been playing through some underlying injuries. Are you noticing a reoccurring theme here? Although Phillip Rivers was beginning to clearly show his age and the cycle that he was stuck in, the Chargers decided they wanted to give him another contract extension. Four years, $84 million. Now I'm going to skip ahead a bit here because the next few years for Phillip Rivers were very similar. He would put up ridiculous numbers, but it was always in vain because the rest of the team would end up disappointing in one way or another. If it wasn't the defense, it was the special teams. If it wasn't the special teams, the whole team was just riddled with injuries. 2015 and 2016 resulted in records of 4-12 and 5-11. and So when 2017 came around, Chargers fans, who had already been through plenty leading up to this point, had another tough pill to swallow. Dean Spanos, the owner of the team, was officially moving the Chargers out of San Diego into Los Angeles. The same fans that stuck around throughout all the years and the wackiness that plagued this franchise were now losing their team. The Chargers kind of put San Diego on the map. I mean, for the longest time, I didn't know anything about San Diego. I just knew that they had great weather, the San Diego Zoo, and the San Diego Chargers. <laughs> that was about it. 
And now that I think about it, that's still really all I know about San Diego. But Spanos moving the Chargers to LA could be its own separate video, so I'll leave it at that. For the next couple years, Phillip Rivers and the Chargers basically had no home games. Their new stadium was still under construction, so for the time being, they were not playing in an NFL stadium, and they had little to no fans in LA. So even when they were at home, it always felt like an away game. With all that being said though, the Chargers were still able to have some pretty solid years during this time. They brought in Anthony Lynn as a new head coach, Melvin Gordon was in his prime, and Keenan Allen was back from injury, giving Phillip Rivers one of the best receivers he's ever had. In 2017, they finished 9-7 and, and still missed the playoffs, but the next season, they finished 12-4 and, and were a wildcard team making the playoffs for the first time in five years. At this point, it was pretty apparent that Rivers was not going to be playing for much longer. He was 36, had a bunch of kids. The writing was kind of on the wall that this was probably one of the last hurrahs for the Phillip Rivers-led Chargers. They would go to Baltimore to play a very young and rough around the edges Lamar Jackson. The Chargers would end up winning 23 to 17 in a very ugly game where Rivers threw for only 160 yards. They advanced to the divisional round to play the Patriots, where Tom Brady was also at least perceived to be in the final years of his career. The Chargers offense couldn't keep drives alive on key possessions, and their defense just didn't show up at all. They lost 41 to 28. That would really be the last title run Phillip Rivers made as a Charger. The following year, he threw 23 touchdowns and 20 interceptions, which most definitely played a part in the team's final record of 5-11. and 11. The franchise did not re-sign him, and Phillip Rivers' time as a Charger had come to an end. I thought he was going to retire. He was no longer able to play his usual gunslinger style without throwing the ball to the other team. But he actually hit free agency, and in March of 2020, he signed a one-year deal with the Colts, a team that is just as, if not more dysfunctional than the Chargers. I mean, they've had a new starting quarterback every season for the past decade, and Phillip Rivers was just another name on that list. He used that time in Indy to show that he still had more to give the game. He was able to pass Dan Marino in career passing touchdowns and notched another 4,000 plus passing yard season. However, during week 11, he would rupture his plantar plate, an injury that would require surgery. Philip Rivers opted to postpone the surgery until the offseason and would play the remainder of the season, hurt. He would still lead the team to an 11-5 record, which was enough to make the playoffs as a wildcard team. They would play the Bills in that wildcard round, and it actually was a very entertaining game. You had the young franchise quarterback in Josh Allen trying to find his way in the postseason against the veteran Phillip Rivers, who was just holding on for dear life to try and carry this team to a place he had never been before, a Super Bowl. Ruptured plantar play in all, but the Bills defended their home field and beat the Colts 27 to 24. Less than two weeks after the loss, Phillip Rivers announced that he was retiring. 17 seasons, 63,440 yards, 421 touchdowns, 209 interceptions, and eight Pro Bowls. Phillip Rivers had a hell of a career. After looking back at all of this history, Phillip Rivers had a couple instances where he nearly reached the top of the mountain. That was primarily in the mid 2000s when he had Ladanian Tomlinson alongside him. When he did get to the AFC Championship game against New England, there were too many injuries to key players to pull off the upset, which is really unfortunate for them because the Pats played a bad game. But once the early 2010s came around, the franchise essentially had to rebuild around Rivers. They were able to do that quickly, but by then, Payne Manning was in their division. So that one time the Chargers did make the playoffs in that window, they were a wildcard team. But even after Manning retired, Rivers was pretty old, constantly playing through injuries and very turnover prone. Then you add in the team moving to LA, and that was just a cherry on top. It makes you realize just how many things need to go right in order to win the Super Bowl. In my mind, Phillip Rivers will go down as one of those all-time greats who never won a championship. In the same space as Dan Marino. How do you view Phillip Rivers, and why do you think he never won a Super Bowl. Let us know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and also subscribe to the channel. That way you can keep up with all the new videos that we upload here throughout the week and our NBA and NFL podcasts 
that we live stream right here on this YouTube channel every Wednesday night. Also, if you want to be a part of the AFR family, join our discord. It's linked right below in the description and it's completely free to join. Thanks for watching and I'll see you boys around. Was still just enough to win the division by routing the Bronker. <laughs> the hell's a Bronker? In these past few years, his turnovers. <laughs> in these past few years, his turnover rate had highly increased. Good God. The franchise decided not to re sign him, and Philip Rivers. <clears throat> the following year, he threw 20. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. God.